When we get to the end of Anatomy and Physiology 2 at Kirkwood Community College, we've covered the major body systems. We've covered cardiovascular, we've covered respiratory, we've covered urinary electrolytes, and other major body systems, but these particular systems may have been what have failed in Michael Jackson's death. So even though it's a sad case, it's a very prescient case to freshmen and sophomores of Anatomy and Physiology 2 to see if you understand how basically breakdowns in homeostasis can bring in several body systems and it generally occurs in steps. I usually refer to those steps as dominoes falling. So again, this is intended to be a very, very respectful review of Michael Jackson's death through the eyes of a freshman and sophomore in anatomy and physiology. Now let me be really clear. I'm no MD. I'm no diagnostician. I'm a PhD in neuroscience and I teach community college anatomy and physiology. But I've seen enough of healthcare that I see that what lands a patient in the hospital, what causes them to present, is often not where it all began. Basically, dominoes had to fall, or conditions had to lead to other conditions, had to lead to other conditions, and that's why that patient is in front of you. And so, I think it's very good then for students to think as healthcare as dominoes falling. So, this again is intended as a respectful learning exercise for students in healthcare who want to see how dominoes can fall. I want to go through each of these in detail, but I also want to do one slide just by way of introduction that takes you through all of the steps. With Michael Jackson, it begins as propofol, and propofol is an anesthetic that decreases breathing. When you decrease breathing, that causes an increase in CO2. One of the things about the body is if there's an increase in CO2, there's also an increase in acid, and this is called respiratory acidosis. Now, acid can disturb proteins, but one of the other things it can do is disturb potassium. It basically kicks it out of cells and causes hyperkalemia, causes the amount of potassium outside of the cell to rise. Now, once you've messed with potassium or you've altered potassium, this can affect depolarizations, and these depolarizations may be in the neuron action potential, may be in the autorhythmic cell in the heart, or it can also be the muscle action potential. We're going to specifically look at the cardiac muscle action potential because that's going to become longer. And if you were to look at an ECG, you'd see this is a long QT interval. And long QT intervals basically can, can lead to what are called ectopic pacemakers. And that's when the normal pacemaker is no longer in control of the heart, but pacemakers take over at various other parts of the heart, and this causes cardiac arrest. Essentially, the electrical system is not passing through the heart as it should. That means blood is not passing through the heart as it should, and blood is not being pumped as it should. So propofol is a pretty easy step to understand because it's simply an anesthetic. It's very short-lived. It doesn't last very long in the body, but one of the consequences of it is it depresses breathing, so it inhibits breathing. So a point of the respiratory system, and this is a figure of lungs, is to exchange oxygen for CO2. So you need to take in oxygen and get rid of CO2. If you've decreased your breathing, you can't get rid of that CO2, and it builds up. A buildup in CO2, if you like chemical reactions, there's a chemical reaction at the bottom that shows that CO2 can combine with water to become carbonic acid. And then in the blood, carbonic acid can split into hydrogen and bicarbonate ion. And that hydrogen ion is the one that we really, really care about because that's acid. So the basic take-home message from this figure is if you increase CO2 on the left, you increase the reactants on the right, and that means you've got more acid. So this causes respiratory acidosis. One of the things acid can do is it can disturb proteins, but another thing it can do is that it can alter potassium. And essentially, hydrogen and potassium move across the cell membrane in opposite directions. So if all of a sudden there's a lot of hydrogen outside the cell, it's going to diffuse into the cell. And when it diffuses into the cell, potassium is going to exchange across the cell membrane. So potassium will leave the cell. Now normally, potassium is fairly low in concentration outside the cell. So this increase in potassium outside the cell is called hyperkalemia. Hyper is, as in a hyperactive child is overactive. Hyperkalemia means you've got too much potassium outside your cells. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about action potentials, but hyperkalemia extends action potentials. What an action potential is, is a cell can change its voltage from negative voltages up to positive voltages and then back down to negative voltages. This is a very good way to signal because it's using electricity. It's essentially alternating current. But part of the problem here, or part of the need, is that potassium has to leave the cell. 
because potassium is positively charged. And when it leaves the cell, it takes its positive charge with it, and that makes the inside of the cell negative again. So if we change our voltage up to positive, we need to let potassium out of the cell to get back down to negative. Well, if there's a lot of potassium outside the cell already, then the potassium that's inside the cell simply doesn't want to leave by diffusion, and, it, and the voltages cannot return back down to negative. So you can depolarize the cell, but it makes it difficult to repolarize the cells. If we look specifically at the cardiac muscle action potential, which I won't go into a lot of detail, hopefully you know this from your AP, but basically it looks like that figure in the middle. And on the left, the green, we change our voltage up to positive and back down to negative, and in the meantime, cardiac muscle is contracting. But I said on the previous slide that if there's a lot of potassium outside the cell, then that potassium won't want to leave to get our trace to come back down to negative. It will extend our trace, which means it will extend our muscle action potential. Now, hyperkalemia can have vast effects on the heart. It can actually affect the atria, and it can cause no or small P waves. And what this tells us is perhaps the atria and the SA node, the part of the heart that's responsible for telling the heart when to beat, may no longer be functional. Another problem is it can extend out the QT interval. And what happens here is muscles in the heart are waiting to be stimulated by a neighboring cell. And usually that neighboring cell is eventually stimulated by the pacemaker of the heart. Well, if a cell has a very long muscle action potential, it can stay stimulated so long that the neighboring cells begin to mistake it for the pacemaker. And so now the pacemaker moves to that neighboring cell from the original pacemaker of the cell. And this can occur if you have very long QT intervals. So essentially what happens is you get ectopic pacemakers. What ectopic pacemakers are are alternate pacemakers. So in green, I've got the normal pacemaker. And that normally stimulates the rest of the muscle to fire in synchrony. You can develop other pacemakers, which are called ectopic pacemakers. And they can occur all over the heart. What this means, if there's going to be pacemakers all over the heart, is there's not going to be a uni uniform flow of voltage through the heart. Electricity will be flowing in multiple directions through the heart. And that means blood is going to flow in multiple directions through the heart, not the normal way from right atrium to right ventricle out to the lungs, back to the left atrium, into the left ventricle, and out to the aorta. So normally the heart squeezes in uniformity to keep the blood flowing in one direction. But if the electricity is flowing in multiple ways through the heart, the blood is going to flow in multiple ways through the heart, and the blood is not going to be pumped out of the heart. There's a pretty good link at the bottom. It's copyrighted, so I don't want to show it in this movie. But if you go to that link, there's some pretty good animations about what cardiac arrest is, heart failure is, and heart attack is. Thank you.